Today we're going to cover an exciting new combination 10 gigabit and 1 gigabit managed switch from QNAP. If you want to hear more about this new versatile low cost switch, then definitely watch the rest of this video. If you haven't done so already, then please subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. As our network requirements grow and the needs for more ports, flexibility, and speed changes, finding affordable equipment that fits all these needs becomes increasingly difficult. As I am in the process of upgrading some of my switches, finding exactly what I want that I could afford wasn't easy. This new QNAP gave me almost everything I needed for much less than I thought. Today I want to share with you the new QNAP QSWM408-2C. This is a simple layer 2 managed switch that has basically four 10 gigabit ports. Two of them are combo ports, which you'll see here. And then two of them are dedicated S SFP plus ports, um, which require a transceiver of whatever speed you want to put in there. In addition, there is eight one gigabit ports and a console access port, which allows you to manage the switch without it being connected to your network, which comes in handy sometimes. This device actually comes in a series of uh, various number of configurations, any, ranging anywhere from managed to unmanaged. I did do a video on the unmanaged version. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll post the link in the description. I have two of these, two of the unmanaged versions right now that I'm using. One in my entertainment center in the family room and one in my office here to allow a couple devices to get 10 gigabit. The purpose of this switch was actually to replace a one gigabit switch that's been around for a long time and basically add the 10 gig capabilities. So I'm going to use one of these uh, SFP plus ports to interconnect to my current QNAP switch which has which is a 12 port and has four dedicated SFP plus ports that I can use to uh, create an uplink. Therefore I'll be able to I want to value these RJ45 ports because um, internally they will auto negotiate the SFP Plus, you have to actually put the correct transceiver in it. So if you want 10 gig, you have to use an, F, um, an SFP Plus. And if you want a, a 1 gig, you need to use an SFP. So they don't do a good job with auto negotiation, um, at least at, at the transceiver level. So as I mentioned, um, to hook this up and to complete at least the way that I want to implement this switch, um, I bought a couple of low-cost transceivers, and these are multi-mode fiber type. So you can see by looking on the inside, I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, but this basically clips into this cable here. So we'll be actually interconnecting an existing switch with um, using an um, SFP Plus on each end of the switch, both in my current QNAP switch and also into this switch, and then we'll interconnect with this 10 meter ca cable. So, and this is also multi-mode fiber, in case you haven't seen it before. So we'll be making the connection that way. So with that in mind, let's get this thing hooked up. I'll show you what it looks like after it's mounted and installed. And then we'll get into the web interface so we can see how that works. And then ultimately do it, just a little bit of testing just to make sure that it's performing the way that, that I expect it to. As this is a managed switch, let's take a quick uh, view of some of the options available and quickly cover each section to give you a better idea of the feature set. Um, starting with the overview page, this gives you kind of a visual overview on the left hand side here. Tells you the speed of your connections and what's actually active currently. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot in there. Then we get the system information page, which gives you the stats. It gives you the model name, IP address, MAC address, firmware, temperature and the rpm the this thing does have a fan and i do want to i don't think i mentioned that earlier it's extremely quiet so it shouldn't probably cause you any problems i haven't really seen the speed of the fan change since i've been hammering this thing over the last few days so and i'm in southern california so i'm not really concerned that it's going to be a problem but i just wanted to point out that it's there Let's quickly look at the port management screen. This gives you a kind of a visual overview of what's going on, the speeds of your connections, and certainly what's active. And then down here, it tells you the actual statistics. So it tells me that I have a 100 megabit uh, video camera attached to it. Uh, I have a 10 gig full duplex upload, which is the link to my other switch. And then I have a two and a half gig device down here. 
So it's just a quick um, kind of gives you an overview of what you're at. As you highlight these items, you can see the color changing up on the screen. So it's kind of handy. It's just a, a quick info screen. The VLAN screen is um, actually really well done. So if you look at the VLAN screen, you can kind of see all of the VLANs that you've created. And if you're not used to working with VLANs, I do want to mention that these VLANs have to be created in your router. So they have to be talking the same language. If you create a VLAN ID on your switch and it's not in your router, it's not going to work. So make sure that you know you understand your entire pipeline. But as far as managing the uh, VLANs, this is really kind of easy. You can just click on the screen and select the ports you want, unselect them from the default, and you're on your way. As you can see um, here, I've got two isolated ports. So one and two of my switch have been dedicated to my IoT VLAN so that I can do some testing without being concerned. And my port number nine is my uplink, so which is shared. We have a link aggregation screen, which allows you to basically aggregate or combine two or more ports to one pipe. So this is really helpful in really high capacity situations. I'm not sure it's all that useful at home, but it's good to have, I guess. We'll skip down here to ACL. The ACL is a um, access list, basically. So if you want to filter the devices on your network by MAC address or by IP address, you can. Again, I usually don't use this because I control everything through my firewall, but it's nice to know that's there. If you do want to do some custom figurations, you can. Here we have the QoS screen. Um, this is a, you know, some people really need this. Uh, I don't, but it's nice to know that it, I can actually configure a QoS if I want to. I do very little QoS work, but when I do it, I do it on my firewall. But it's really... Um, for testing or for you know specific applications everybody's got a different need it's really nice to know that it's there the systems setting screen uh, gives you kind of what you would think it would you would see um, i can edit my switch name gives me my model number uh, ip address mac address uptime my current firmware version i also have the option to change my ip address to uh, static or leave it at D, uh, DHCP, password, time and date, and then the backup screen. Um, nice to be able to do all these configurations, back up your configurations into a safe place, and then if something gets really fouled up, you can restore it. Now the firmware screen is um, kind of well done. I mean, it'd be nice to just have it do everything automatically for you, but this is a one button operation so you basically hit check it goes out and tells you we'll just do it real quick here it goes out and tells you yeah you're up to date you're good to go if it had an update it would prompt you you click ok it installs it and it's done so one stop shot you do have the option of doing a manual firmware update so if you want to roll back or do something else that you wanted to, to try you can do it manually by pointing to a file um, again this isn't this is, I've used uh, this type of screen on other devices before once in a while. Um, I just like the whole live update thing. I just don't want to spend a lot of time updating firmware. So that's kind of an overview of the switch capabilities. Um, just to make sure that everything's working or just to show you that everything's working and connecting at the speeds that it's, um, you know, that we kind of expect in this particular situation. We'll do a quick test to give you an overview of what it's capable of and go from there. As we can see from the transfer speed, the performance of this thing is really good. It's exactly what you would expect to see given the source and destination devices. You do get some limitations on those. Overall, I'm really pleased with this switch for the price point. It's really tough to beat with all these features. Anyway, that's about it for this video, and I hope you found it useful, helpful. If you did like this video, Please give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. 